Hi everybody, it's me, Mr. Kennedy, your favorite math teacher. I hope you can read these. These are the notes for finding absolute minima and maxima. So why don't you pause this and write them down and then we'll do some examples. Hey, so here's the first example. Uh, f of x equals 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 36x on this closed interval, 1 to 5. So if we follow my steps, step 1 says find the stationary points. So I'm going to do the first derivative test. f prime of x equals 6x squared minus 30x plus 36. And I want to set that equal to 0. So let's see, I can factor a 6 out of everything there. All right, and then I can hopefully factor this quadratic. Well, hopefully you can. That looks good. So give it the old t-bar. x equals 3, x equals 2. Those are the zeros of the derivative, meaning there's a horizontal tangent line, which tells you x equals 3 and x equals 2 are where the stationary points are. Okay? Let's do the next step. All right, so the second step of the process is to evaluate the original function at the stationary points, which are x equals 2 and x equals 3, but also at the endpoints of the interval, 1 to 5. So I'm going to do f of 1 and f of 5. So these four x values, I'm plugging into the original function and finding out what their value is. That's step two of this process. So I did that already. If you plug in one, you get 23. f of two is 28. f of three is 27. And f of five is 55. All I did was I plugged in the two endpoints and the two stationary points we just found out. Okay? Now I just have to pick from this list what's the smallest number, what's the largest number. That's the absolute min and the absolute max. So, ding, 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 this is the winner, absolute min. And, ding, ling, 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 this is the absolute max on that interval. And if you graph it between 1 and 5, you get something that looks kind of like this, okay? Where there's a relative min and a relative max, in the window, but the endpoints are actually lower and higher than the relative min and max. Okay, so in this example, the two endpoints turn out to be the winners. The absolute minimum is the lowest y value, the absolute maximum is the highest y value. Is that simple? Let's look at another. All right, I'm back for another example. So here's a trig one. I want to find the absolute mi mins and maxes of f of x equals x minus tan x on this closed interval, negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, our good old friend 45 degrees. So, first derivative test, f prime equals 1 minus, derivative of tan is secant squared, okay, set that equal to 0. Well, let me add that to the other side, so I have 1 equals something squared, what's another way to write secant, 1 over cosine? All right, square top and the bottom, I get 1 equals 1 over cosine squared. I'm going to cross multiply and give me one second so that you don't have the glare. All right, so here's where we're at. Basically, I want to know where does cosine squared equals 1 if you cross multiply. So that really means where is cosine equal to plus or minus 1, right? And if we think about what our cosine graph looks like, at x equals 0, cosine is equal to 1, and it's equal to negative 1 uh, at pi and negative pi. But those aren't in my interval. So x equals 0 is the only critical value in that interval. So that's all that we're going to work with. All right, so the second step is we plug in our stationary point, which we just got, x equals 0, and then we plug in the endpoints of the interval. And you don't need to plug in anything outside of that interval. So if you plug in negative pi over 4, you get negative pi over 4 minus the tan of negative pi over 4, which is negative 1, if you look at your unit circle. So minus negative 1 means plus 1. 
So here's what I have. Negative pi over 4 plus 1. And with a common denominator, that's negative pi plus 4 over 4. Plug in 0, you get 0. 0 minus tan of 0 is 0. And here, <clears throat> when you plug in pi over 4, you get pi over 4 minus tan of pi over 4 is 1. So you get pi over 4 minus 1, which is pi minus 4 over 4. All I have to do is my conclusion. I've got to find out which is the highest number, which is the lowest number. Well, if we think about pi as approximately 3, this is like negative 3 plus 4 over 4. It's approximately 1 fourth. Anyway, uh, it's bigger than 0. So this turns out to be the biggest number here. Okay? And with the same reasoning, this is a, like negative 1 quarter. Okay? So it's definitely smaller than 0. So that means that I have an absolute max at this point, negative pi over 4, comma, negative pi plus 4 over 4. And this point here is an absolute minimum. And I'm done. I just write a conclusion. Let's try one more. All right, so here's the third example. I want to find the maxes and mins of 4x cubed minus 3x to the fourth on negative infinity to infinity. All real numbers. So there's no endpoints. I have to do something a little tricky at the end. I'll show you. So let's start out with the first derivative test. f prime is going to be 12x squared minus 12x cubed. Let's set that equal to 0. Factor out 12x squared. I get 1 minus x equals 0. t bar. So x equals 0 and x equals 1 are my stationary points. All right, so I'm ready to plug in my two stationary points, 0 and 1, and the endpoints of the interval. Now, this is a little tricky. What I'm really doing here is limits. I'm doing the limit as x approaches negative infinity because you can't plug in negative infinity. All right, same thing here. I'm doing a limit. So you need to do that so that you know how your graph is behaving at the ends of the interval. Okay, negative infinity and positive infinity. So if I'm doing the limit as x approaches negative infinity, remember from this chapter that all you need to do is look at the leading coefficient, the one with the highest degree. So if I plug in negative infinity, raise it to the fourth, now it's positive infinity, multiply by negative 3, I'm back at negative infinity. All right, so the limit is negative infinity. Let me do the other limit since I'm in limit mode. If I plug in positive infinity, raise it to the fourth, and then multiply by negative 3, I'm getting negative infinity. Those are my two limits. Okay, so what that tells me is that the graph is going down on both sides. I don't know what happens in the middle, okay? That tells me there's no absolute minimum. So I can write that right now, no absolute minimum. All right, maybe there's an absolute max. Let's plug in 0 and 1. If I plug in 0, I'm getting 0. If I plug in 1, I'm getting, let's see, 4 minus 3 is 1. So there's no lowest number, but this is the highest number, f of 1 equals 1. So that tells me there's an absolute max at 1 comma 1. All right, absolute max, no absolute minimum. So good luck on the homework. I think you guys are good enough to do it. I believe in all of you. Until next time, I'm Mr. Kennedy. May the math be with you.